The federal government has said that schools would, re would remain closed for now. The presidential task force on COVID-19 made this known during its daily briefing on Monday. While giving an update on the PTF announcement in a tweet by the personal assistant on new media to President Muhammad Buhari Bashir Ahmed. To take a look at this is head of Green Spring School, Lagos, Sheyi Ojugo. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. What, what and the you... name is Sheyi, F-E-Y-I, but I'm sure we'll be good. Okay, thank you for the correction. Yeah. All right, so yeah, while we read about other nations like the UK, South Africa, and even Cameroon reopening schools, we're still unsure of when we will take uh, that move. What has your experience of this period of transition been like from the viewpoint of a head of a large school with a boarding component? Okay, thank you. Well, um, when the government announced um, the shutdown um, towards the last week of March, of course, we had to swing into action immediately, and all our students had to go home. But one of the things we did immediately was to tell them to go home with their resources, their books, because we were not sure, you know, what was going to happen or how long this was going to be for. And of course, it's been very uncertain, you know, over the past few weeks. And because we already had um, a virtual learning environment platform, it was a bit easy for us to swing into online school. It wasn't 100% easy because instead of augmenting uh, on-site education with you know, um, the virtual learning environment, we had to depend solely on the virtual learning environment. So we quickly deployed that. We sent information to our parents, um, encouraged all our students to get on board because right now, that is it. You know, there's no on-site school. Um, in the interim. So that's how it's been. Of course, it was challenging for parents because at the beginning, you know, of the lockdown, parents also were working from home. They needed to support, you know, the children. So, you know, from the feedback we received, juggling that with supporting, you know, juggling their own work with support, supporting the children was a huge um, leap for a number of parents. And of course, based on the other challenges, we're all kind of aware of in our nation, the issue of power, and of course data, which is not the cheapest thing even now. So we had a lot of that, but by and large, I would say uh, people are kind of settled into the new normal for now. What acute lessons have you learned from the process so far? Uh, well, I think one of the things that is very, very crucial and that we've learned as a school, even as individuals is, Nothing is really set in stone, you know, and therefore we must be very fluid in our thinking and we must be very adaptable because the truth is when you think about education and learning for children, yes, um, we have a pandemic we're all dealing with and thankfully it's not, um, it's not just about Nigeria, it's a global pandemic. So it's not just what is happening to us, it's about ev almost every nation of the world. So as educators, one of the first things we quickly told ourselves is learning must continue. We cannot afford to have gaps in the children's learning. So over the past few weeks, we've had to, you know, deploy plans, go back to the drawing board to see, okay, is this working? What else can we do? How else can we support our students and their families? Right. So I, I would think the biggest lesson for us as an organization at Green Spring School, and even for our parents, because just from interacting with them, and even as individuals, is to be fluid in our thinking and to look at situations and ask ourselves, what do we need to do here? How can we get things done? All right. So I, that has been the greatest interject. thing. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you so much for your time and your insight on the subject. Thank you.